Hey, good people. Welcome to Geometric Sequences. Okay. So a geometric sequence is a sequence of numbers that has a common ratio between any two successive numbers of the sequence. Geometric sequences, this is an example of one. So I have negative six, negative one, six, negative 36, two, 16, right? This is an example of a geometric sequence because the common ratio is negative six. If I take two 16 and divide it by negative 36, I'm gonna get negative six. If I take negative 36 divided by positive six, I'm gonna get negative 36. And if I take positive six divided by negative one, I'm gonna get negative six. That is a common ratio. So with geometric sequences, we have the explicit formula, where a sub n is the nth term of the sequence, a sub 1 is the first number of the sequence, and r is the common ratio that we just talked about. So in examples 1, 2, 3, and 4, we're going to find the common ratio. Example 1, out of 9, negative 3, 15, negative 75, and 375. I'm going to take 375 divided by negative 75, negative 75 divided by 15, and then 15 divided by negative 3. When I do that, I'm going to get negative 5 for all of them. This is what I want, r equals negative 5. That's my common ratio. Example number 2, I have 18, 72, 288, 1152. I'm going to take 72 divided by 18, 288 divided by 72, 1152 divided by 288, and I'm going to get 4 for each of those. That is a common ratio, so r equals 4. Number 3, 8, 12, 18, 27. I'm going to take 27 divided by 18, 18 divided by 12, 12 divided by 8, and I'm going to get 1.5 or 3 halves. Both of those are acceptable answers, so that means that my common ratio is 3 over 2 or 1.5 because, you know, both of those are the same thing. And then I have 6, 10, 15, 21, 21 divided by 15, 15 divided by 10, 10 divided by 6. I'm going to get 1.6 repeating, 1.5, and then 1.4. There is no common ratio, so this sequence is not geometric. Yay, you did the first four examples. On to example number five out of nine. So you have a geometric sequence, and it says find the first five terms of the sequence given a sub n equals two times one fourth to the n minus one power right i want to find the first five terms so n is the position of the numbers so i'm going to plug in a one i'm going to plug in a two I'm going to plug in a 3. You see the orange 1, 2, and 3? That's what indicates what position. So I want to find the first five terms. So I'm going to get a sub 1 equals 2, a sub 2 equals 1 half, a sub 3 equals 1 eighth. When I simplify those, right? So you would do exponents first, um, and then simplify the exponent, apply the exponent, and then do the multiplication. With that knowledge, a sub 1 is 2, a sub 2 is 1 half, a sub 3 is 1 eighth. Following that pattern, I find a sub 4 is 1 over 32, and a sub 5 is 1 over 28. Ta-da! Congratulations, you did example 5. Now on to example 6 out of 9. So let's say you have negative 5, negative 10, negative 20, 40, sorry, negative 5, positive 10, negative 20, positive 40, negative 80, and it says find the ninth term of the sequence right now I have the first five terms of the sequence so the first thing you're gonna do is find the common ratio right you're gonna divide a2 divided by a1 which is 10 divided by negative 5 r equals negative 2 Ta -da! that's their first step right so then you're gonna find the ninth term by using the rule you're gonna plug in a sub 9 equals negative 5 parentheses negative 2 because inside the parentheses is your common ratio which you just found negative 5 is a sub 1 which is the first term and then 9 is the position that you're finding and then the minus 1 is always in that formula the explicit formula and you simplify right so you're gonna do exponent 9 minus 1 that's 8 you're gonna apply the 8 exponent 
you can get 256, positive 256. And you do 5 times 256. Negative 1280. Good job. So you can also have done this by hand, right? I could have just been like, oh, multiply by negative two, multiply by negative two, multiply by negative two, right? I could have done ne negative 80 times negative two, negative 160 divided by negative two until I got to a sub nine. But that's also a way to check your work. Example seven. Okay, so example number seven, given the first and first term and the common ratio of a geometric sequence, find the first five terms and the explicit formula. So you're given the first term, which is a sub one, 0 0.8, and r, the common ratio is negative five. What you're gonna do first is you're gonna multiply a sub one and r. And that's gonna give you a sub two. Then you're gonna do a sub two times r, a sub three times r, a sub four times r, and then you're gonna get a sub five. So you do 0.8 times negative five, you get negative four, you get four times negative five, 20, 20 times negative five, negative 100, negative 100 times negative five, 500. So now you want to write the explicit formula. So you're going to do 0 0.8 times negative 5 to n minus 1. And boom, you did it. You just plugged in the first term, a sub 1, plugged in r, and you have an explicit formula. That's the second part of that problem. It's easy. Bada bing, bada boom. You wrote an explicit formula. Yay, you. Okay, so example 8 out of 9. So you only have two more examples left. You're doing great. You're doing great. Given a term in a geometric sequence and the common ratio, find the first five terms and the explicit formula. So you have a sub 4 this time, not a sub 1. And you have r. So r is 5. Plug into the explicit formula. So we have 25 is a sub n. Uh, well, it's a sub 4 to be specific. Equals a sub 1. We don't know what that is, but we got to figure it out. 5 is the common ratio, and then 4 is the position that we're using because we have a sub 4 and then minus 1. So we're going to mess around with that exponent. 4 minus 1 is going to give us 3. 5 to the third power is going to give us 125. And then I need to get rid of that 125 so that I can isolate a sub 1. And so because multiplication is happening between them, we have to isolate a sub 1 by division. So we're gonna divide by 125 real quick, real quick, right? So those 125s would simplify out and I'm gonna simplify 25 over 125 and I'm gonna get 1 fifth. So guess what? A sub one equals 1 fifth, okay? So now we write the rule. I'm gonna use that formula at the top, a sub n equals a sub one times r to the n minus one and we're gonna plug in a sub n equals one fifth we just found that parentheses five that's the common ratio we knew that already they gave it to us and then n minus one ta-da you wrote the rule good job all right on to our last example um example nine is find the tenth term of the sequence but guess what you have the fifth term and the seventh term you'll have no other terms this one it gets a little spicy all right, so substitute a sub n for a sub 7 and a sub 1 for a sub 5. We got a lot going on. So a sub 7 equals a sub 5 times r to the 7 minus 5. So what we're doing here is we're kind of like using some substitution to get us to where we want to go. Okay, so we're going to do the exponent 7 minus 5 is 2. Um, we got to get rid of that 96, so we're going to isolate R by division, so let's divide by 96 on both sides. 
right? So we simplify that 96 out, 384 divided by 96 is four equals R squared. How do you get rid of a squared exponent? You square root both sides. Okay, so obviously you get R equals plus or minus two. So my problem becomes a little tricky here because it could be a negative two or it could be a positive two and I have to assess both situations. So I'm gonna plug find a sub one by plugging in a sub five. Right, so we're gonna do 96 equals a sub one, parentheses two, parentheses five minus one. So on the other side, I'm gonna check the negative two, right? So with the positive two, five minus one is four, two to the fourth power is 16, divide both sides by 16. I'm gonna get 96 divided by 16 is six. So a sub one could be six, or when I simplify the other side, five minus one is four, negative two to the fourth power is still positive 16, so a sub one is six. I like that, I like that both things came out to be the same thing, right? So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna find the 10th term of the sequence, right? I'm gonna plug in six as a sub one, so both options have positive six as a sub one, but I still have to use negative two and positive two. I don't just get to do one or the other. So 10 minus one is nine. Um, two to the ninth power is 512 times six. I'm gonna get a sub 10 equals 3072. Or, um, I'm going to do 10 minus one is nine, nine, uh, two, negative two to the power of nine is negative 512, negative 512. And then we're gonna do six times 512. And we're gonna get negative 372. So this problem has two answers. It could either be 3072 or negative 3072. That's it guys, be good. Go over the video, make sure you took some notes. Um, and I'll catch you in the next one.